Craving the perfect holiday snack? Check out Farmer Bill's Biltonk. Think beef jerky, but better. No sugar, no preservatives, just pure animal protein goodness. Crafted from premium grass-fed beef or bison and air-dried to perfection, Farmer Bill's Biltong is nutrient-packed, energy-dense, and perfect for an on-the-go treat or a standout snack for your next party. My favorite is the original bison, but the other flavors like the original beef, smokehouse, and spicy chili have me second-guessing that choice more than once. Visit FarmerBillsProvisions.com to grab a one-pound slab or a variety pack and use code BIZBIT10 for 10% off. Farmer Bills Biltong, don't be the two-liter guy at this year's Christmas party. We are living in systemic theft right now, and I think that that will be looked at as a digital civil rights movement in the future. Welcome to the Business Bitcoinization Show, the show dedicated to helping you enrich your life and grow your business with Bitcoin, the hardest money on planet Earth. I'm your host, Josh Friedemann, and our guest today is Daniel Hirschberger, who's the founder and president of Bitcoin is Better, a U.S.-based nonprofit focused on the peaceful adoption of a global Bitcoin standard by 2040. Daniel and I have gotten to know each other over the last year or so, and since this interview, I've joined the board of Bitcoin is Better as an advisor, and I'm very excited about the future of this organization. I think after hearing this interview, you'll understand why, and I hope you'll consider being a part if it sounds like something that is worth your time as well. Of course, before we get to the interview, I do want to take a second to thank those who have been supporting the podcast on Fountain in the last week. This week, we only have a couple supporters. That being said, thank you to No Waste, BTC Signs, and CP for streaming sats to the podcast. If you would like to support the show as well, you can listen on the Fountain app and either stream sats or send a boost with a comment. If you do send a comment, I'll plan to read it on the show. Now, this week's Bitcoin meetup spotlight is the Central New Jersey Bitcoiners. The Central New Jersey Bitcoiners are true to their name, centrally located to Philadelphia, New York City, and everywhere in between, so you're only ever a short ride away. And they meet very close to Plainfield's Amtrak station, so no car, no problem. Their monthly meetings range from Bitcoin-specific deep dives to orange pilling sessions to just Bitcoiners hanging out. They also feature New Jersey's best coffee, seed oil, free snacks, and if you choose, ice cream. You can find them on Meetup or on Twitter at NJBTC. Those links are down below, along with a link to the Oshi app, which you can use to find a Bitcoin Meetup near you. Now, we're going to get to our interview with Daniel right after this. Business owners, unlock the benefits Bitcoin has to offer your business with the Bitcoin for Business Quick Start Guide. This 27-page guide highlights the six ways you can grow your business with Bitcoin. Check it out in the show notes. Daniel, welcome to the podcast. Uh, Thank you, Josh. Big fan of the show. Happy to be here. So I like to start off every single interview with a few questions that help us to get to know you a little bit better and give us some insight for our own lives. So you ready for these? Let's go. All right. When and how did you first learn about Bitcoin? Well, I have to say I saw the news headlines when Bitcoin hit a dollar. And, you know, I see like a mm. crowd of nerds like cheering, you know, like just landed on Mars, basically. So I was like, oh, that's interesting. But I didn't really pay much attention to it. Um, so really, I was... I was looking for Bitcoin for about a decade. Um, I had read a book in 2011 called Broke, and it talked about how America had hundreds of trillions of dollars in unfunded liabilities. So I knew that America was on a bad trajectory, but I didn't really understand why. So I kind of leaned into politics, and it wasn't until uh, 2020 with uh, the pandemic when everything shut down and prices skyrocketed and I'm like, this makes no sense. You know, prices should be going down if people aren't working. So what is happening? So I, uh, I had a real estate investment business and I had a mansion under contract, uh, down here in central Florida and the owner of the mansion, he had like a fire pool, like a playground in his house. It was just over the top. So naturally I asked the homeowner, you know, what do you do for a living to afford this really nice house? And he said he was an investor. It's like, oh, interesting. Uh, What's your favorite investment? 
and he said Bitcoin. And hmm. I was like, Bitcoin? Oh, were you one of the guys that got in at a few dollars? And he's like, no, you should look into it. So, so yeah, I, I signed up for the same crypto research newsletter that he belonged to. Uh, so in, initially, I got in like 50% Bitcoin, 50% crypto. And mm. it wasn't until uh, I went to the Bitcoin conference in Miami, the 2021 conference, and there was a line that stuck out to me. Uh, crypto is the attack on Bitcoin. I was like, mm. wow, that's a very toxic thing to say. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, so then I really dove into... Um, Safe Dean's work with the Bitcoin standard, listen to, listen to a lot of Safe Dean's work. Um, and then the book, Thank God for Bitcoin, really mm -hmm. changed my perspective on this is the problem that Bitcoin is trying to solve. People are being stolen from versus crypto. It's like searching for a problem, companies without any transparency and really just gambling. Uh, so I took a redirect in 2021 and uh and yeah for about the last year i've been laying the groundwork for bitcoin is better.org uh, to reintroduce the working class to bitcoin because there's just so much baggage you know with ftx mount gox i mean it's just like a lineage of people getting ripped off whereas bitcoin it's just TikTok next block it's not bitcoin's yep. fault so I feel like there's such a knowledge gap, especially with the working class, which is the proof of work in the economy. Like this fiat debt mine system doesn't work if the working class understands money and how it works. So, so yeah, the goal of the organization is to help people ask better questions about money and then ultimately come to the realization where Bitcoin is an obvious solution and Bitcoin is better depending on whatever's important to the to the individual because i feel like that statement bitcoin is better is going to mean something different to everyone so yep. so yeah i've laid the the groundwork for the nonprofit uh, we're going to get started with board meetings and getting volunteers involved next month so we're close i'm excited uh, also i wrote this book uh, bitcoin is better natural money that works for the working class and I've got five chapters, a chapter on money, economics, politics, property, and health. So how our mm. debt-based fiat system has made all of those things worse. And then imagining how Bitcoin can make them better as it continues to be adopted. So we'll be talking about each one of those things you've, you've just mentioned, including BitcoinIsBetter.org and your book, Bitcoin Is Better, more. So, you know, people will definitely have a, a more robust view of all those things by the end of this interview. You've already sort of pre-answered question number two, or at least you've given us a number of things that could be the answer for question number two. And that second question is, what's an insight or fact about Bitcoin that you wish everyone understood? Mm. That's a great question. That Bitcoin could be the invention of money. Mm. That if we look at the, the six characteristics of good money, you know, scarce, durable, divisible, portable. Um, in my book, I actually add a seventh, which is transparent. So for the first time, we can actually look at the rules of money. Anyone can. It's a transparent mm -hmm. public code. Uh, so I think that, uh, I mean, gold did a pretty good job, but it got us to where we are today with the dollar being so broken because there was so much trust involved with the physical gold. Whereas now it's it's digital gold, and I believe it's better because it's transparent and it's scarce. So yeah, if if there were one if there was one thing, it would be, hey, this could be this is the future of money. It's not just some like techie play toy, and it and it's much yeah. simpler too. It's like people are usually, especially the working class, are like, oh, that Bitcoin thing is too complicated. Well, I mean, you ask a few questions about dollars. Dollars are much more complicated <laughs> than Bitcoin. So it's a much simpler money, too. It's actually a really good point. Before I ask question number three, just wanted to highlight that. It's really interesting because so many people think Bitcoin is very complicated. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, the only reason the dollar system or a fiat system in general is not complicated or people don't think it is, is because they think they understand how it works. When Really, when they're asked one or two questions about it, they can't give you good answers. 
It's because the fiat system is super complex. And in reality, Bitcoin is way simpler, but it just doesn't feel like it because it's all of this newness introduced to you at once. So I think that's really interesting. As soon as someone says in the future, I, you know, I, I don't worry about Bitcoin or I don't pay attention to it. It's just, you know, too, too complex, too strange, too different. You say, well, you know, explain to me how our current system works and they won't be able to, you know, it's, it's really interesting. I'm glad you highlighted that because that's a simple way to get people thinking. Sometimes it's far better to ask the right question than to give people a bunch of facts about Bitcoin. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's really what I found is most effective. Like asking the question, like I went, I went to a football game with my wife a few weeks ago and we were handing out like signed bookmarks with five better money questions. And I had the chance to, uh, I spoke to one guy he had his master's in finance, worked at BNY Mellon. And uh, and I asked him, like, I, I held up a dollar bill. I'm like, how many of these exist? And I'm, I was like, if you get within a trillion, I'll give this to you. <laughs> and I asked him, he couldn't get within a trillion. He didn't, he he wasn't close. I think he was off by like five or 10 or five or six trillion. I asked wow. probably two dozen people that day. Nobody got close. So I think when we look like 10 to 20 years from now, when Bitcoin is fully adopted, they're going to look back on this time and be like, wow, people work so hard for money and they didn't even know how much existed. Well, what's interesting is like, so you 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 raise up a dollar bill, uh, but the question is, what type of dollar are you talking about? Are you talking about, right. you know, M1, M2? Like, are you talking about digital ledger dollars or is it the actual cash dollars and so it's a complex system and i don't even know which one of those you were you were uh asking him about and he he may not have either but that that simply uh, puts an exclamation mark at the end of your question mm -hmm. you know it's like we really don't even know how to ask a question about the money because the system is that complex and it matters too i was like you know if there's only a hundred of these dollar bills then i'm the richest man in the world right now and I need security. But if there's a quadrillion of these, then I can't buy a stick of gum. So it's like money yep. supply matters. And uh, and yeah, fortunately that day I checked M2 money supply and it was close to 21 trillion. So that was the number mm -hmm. I was rolling with. But like you said, I mean, there's M1, M2, M3. It's like, how do we even measure it? And we have to trust the data as well. We have to trust that those yep. reported numbers are true. Um, so yeah, Bitcoin is a complete paradigm shift. And like you said, it's the newness of it that is scary for some, for some people. Um, but it is simpler and better. Question number three, what's the Bitcoin resource you most recommend to other people? Mm. It depends on the person. So if I'm speaking with someone, um, let's say in the church, someone with a Christian background, uh, definitely thank God for Bitcoin. It's written at a ninth grade reading level. So it's a very simple book to get through to understand why Bitcoin exists from an ethical and a moral perspective. Uh, someone more technical, probably the Bitcoin standard, um, someone who's, you know, wanting to uh, learn by listening or watching. I mean, Breathe Love's series with Sailor. I think that's a great starting point as well. And hopefully my book. I mean, I wrote my book to be a compilation of a lot of different um, ideas in the Bitcoin space and then bringing my background into it as well and simplifying it for the working class. Question number four, beyond Bitcoin, what is a resource, tool, or idea that's been helpful to you or your work at Bitcoin is better recently? Hands down, the Bible. Yeah, leaning into to scripture. And we are, we are living in systemic theft right now. And I think that that will be looked at as a digital civil rights movement in the future. So it's like, instead of getting angry, we have to respond in love and with asking better questions. Um, but, but I, I think yeah, my faith grounds me. I mean, that's the perspective that I bring to Bitcoin is, um, mm -hmm. is yeah, is starting my day with scripture, um, and, and being intentional about, about my faith. Now we have our final, what we call our arbitrary but insightful question, and it's this. As a general life principle, is it better to ask why or why not? Ooh. Why or why not? Well, <laughs> is it okay to, to say both? Because <laughs> I feel like 
I feel like why, like you under, have to understand the problem with why mm-hmm. and keep on. I mean, you go down the why rabbit hole, but I think that you can get stuck in analysis paralysis if you ask, just keep asking why, but not why not. So I think naturally I'm mm-hmm. more of a why not person, but defining the problem with a series of why questions is really important. Meet Linkster, your premier Bitcoin-focused advisor. Linkster caters to businesses, institutions, family offices, and high net worth individuals. They merge your unique financial goals and needs with Linkster's Bitcoin expertise to craft your own sustainable plan to preserve and grow the value of your hard-earned profits and retained earnings. And Linkster is not just advice, it's tailored execution. Connect directly with the founder by visiting Linkster.com. That's L-Y-N-C-S-T-E-R. Dot com Linkster. Secure your future with Bitcoin. Today's episode of Business Bitcoinization is proudly brought to you by Vellus Commerce, where the future of business technology meets Bitcoin. As we journey through the era of Bitcoin and its transformational impact on businesses, there's one name that stands out. Vellus Commerce. Whether you're looking to build a cutting edge website, a seamless mobile app, or custom software, Vellus is your go to team. They've been diving deep into the world of Bitcoin since 2014, making them one of the most experienced groups for integrating Bitcoin and Lightning payments into a variety of digital platforms. But here's what truly sets them apart Vellus Commerce doesn't just build, they bring a wealth of knowledge to ensure your project's success from day one. Their team understands the nuances of Bitcoin, ensuring that your business stays ahead of the curve. And for all business Bitcoinization listeners out there, Vellus Commerce is offering a free consultation to kickstart your project the right way. So if you're ready to future proof your business in the coming age of hyper Bitcoinization, head over to VellusCommerce.com or reach out on Twitter at Vellus Commerce. Let's make sure your business thrives in the Bitcoin era. That's great. I mean, you can answer however you'd like. The reasoning behind the answer is usually the most valuable. So uh, (laughs) I appreciate you sharing that with us today. Now, you've already shared a little bit about Bitcoin is better just earlier in the interview as you were answering the first question. But maybe if there's, uh, you know, a new way you'd like to introduce Bitcoin is better to us. Maybe a little bit more of a backstory about how it came to be. That would be great. But one of the things that you had mentioned that I wrote down and wanted to ask you about is you mentioned something about asking better questions about money. So share with us whatever you want to about Bitcoin is better. But I really want to hear what you mean by asking better questions about money. Yeah, we can start there with the better questions. So I'll just I'll read the questions on these signed bookmarks that we handed out at the at the football game. So got five questions. So the money question, is it smart to work hard for paper money that insiders can print without any work? So this this goes to the root of what I mean by natural money. So when we when we had gold as money, it took new energy to to dig the gold out of the ground. So new work had to happen for new money to come into circulation. With this fiat system that we're living in, it's new debt, which, you know, based on passport privilege, political privilege, Wall Street privilege, it's, it's, it's an unnatural system. So that's the first money question that that I typically ask, like, is it smart to work hard for money that others can print for free? The second is economics. Do you trust banks printing more new dollars will lower your cost of living? So again, just the basic, why are prices going up? And nine times out of 10, you'll get the answer of supply chains. So supply chains were broken during COVID. So I usually follow that up with a question Like, have you ever thought about the supply chain of money? How does that work? And then getting into the fact that, you know, since 1971 to 2021, there were 30 times more dollars created. So Mm. that's 6.9% new dollars per year. So, I mean, theoretically, if you're not getting a 7% raise each year, you're getting a dishonest pay cut. Uh, politics. Do you think giving U.S. lawmakers blank check budgets will reduce corruption? So when the money is divorced from reality, politics becomes divorced from reality. And we end up like with a clown show because when the circus is broken, they send out the clowns. And that's that's sort of where we are in politics today. Mm-hmm. Uh, property. 
do you trust politicians from both parties will always protect your property? So in the property chapter of my book, um, one, one section, I, I go through all the most popular properties and I outline ways to steal that property from you. And at the end, I conclude with Bitcoin is the most difficult property to steal. And it's only going to get more difficult because, I mean, we're, we're coming up with different ways of doing multi-sig, you know, collaborative custody, whereas, you know, gold can be, you know, it can have tungsten in it. And unless you verify it, I mean, how, how do you do that without expensive equipment? Um, artwork, uh, collectibles, I mean, your insurance policy can have fine print where if you lose it in a fire, a flood or a theft. And the fine print, you know, you didn't have the proper security for your for your valuables, then you you lose it. Um, so I go through a handful in real estate too. I mean, with eminent domain, that's it, kind of more of an obvious um, flaw in the in the property value of real estate. Um, and then the final question is health. So, do you think bureaucrats and corporations want you to be healthy? So does the system make more money when you're healthy or when you're unhealthy? And, and really the theme of the whole book is follow the money. So we follow, follow the fiat money and then look at the incentives. And it really, it helps you ask better questions and then have a, a better grasp of why, why this country, why this world just is so broken right now. And a big part mm -hmm. of it is the broken money. So real quick, you've just given us the questions and the explanations, which those paired together are super valuable for those who want a uh, more truncated version of the questions. Could you share with us your better questions about money all at once right here? Just, the, just lay them out for us all in a row. Uh, sure. And also, I'd like to say with a nonprofit, we're going to be having a group of hopefully about a dozen Bitcoiners coming together and creating 40 or 50 really good questions. So these are just mm -hmm. my questions, but this is the ultimate yep. goal, like simplifying and making better questions. So money, mm -hmm. is it smart to work hard for paper money that insiders can print without any work? Economics, do you trust banks printing more new dollars will lower your cost of living? Politics, do you think giving US lawmakers blank check budgets will reduce political corruption? Property. Do you trust politicians from both parties will always protect your property? Health. Do you think bureaucrats and corporations want you to be healthy? If you answer no to any of these questions, study Bitcoin. I appreciate you sharing all those. And that's an amazing resource right there. I think sometimes, obviously, you want to have the best questions possible, the most penetrating questions possible. Having five as opposed to 50 makes it just a lot more digestible. So mm -hmm. those may or may not be the five that you end up with in the, in the long term for a bookmark. But it's very powerful right there just to get people asking questions that they didn't even know that they were maybe supposed to be asking in the first place. One question I have for you is you have this great idea for educating people about why Bitcoin is better. It sounds like you're really wanting to reach the working class. What are you hoping to do at Bitcoin is better? Or maybe even what are you doing right now to get the message to the working class? Mm. Great question. So again, this Bitcoin is better thing has really been something I've been building for the last year, but I'm excited to get multiple minds together and actually mm -hmm. like polish it up of what that looks like, because there's a range of possibilities like. If we get, you know, a few thousand dollars donated per year, like we can print up some bookmarks, go out, you know, train people how to talk about Bitcoin in public and create that curiosity for Bitcoin education. So that's like the, the bootstrap, you know, the lean nonprofit. If, if mm -hmm. this thing takes off and there is a need for it in a community, um, ultimately it would be commercials, billboards, radio ads asking questions about money that create curiosity, which drives the working class to Bitcoin education. Um, so for me, it was like, it was like watching the Super Bowl ads with, you know, Matt Damon, Tom Brady talking about crypto. I was like, you know, 
Bitcoin is so much better, better than crypto gambling. So it's like, mm -hmm. and and hopefully, I mean, with the ETFs, maybe we'll get a little bit more like Bitcoin only commercials. But I, I doubt that there's going to be any like outreach about the ethics, the ethics of money. Um, so that's the void that that uh, we're trying to fill with with Bitcoin is better dot org. So for people listening to this, you know, whatever is published, this will be probably old news by then. But we've just recently had the release, I think yesterday, of the Bitwise. Is it Bitwise, the commercial with the most interesting man in the world from the Dos Equis commercial? And my understanding is I, I haven't really heard too much conversation about this, but I think people are assuming this is kind of getting... Uh, kind of uh, greasing the skids for Super Bowl commercials. And I don't know how I feel about that. Like, obviously, I want the the world to be more aware of Bitcoin and why Bitcoin is better, why it's important, why it's a beneficial tool, not some piece of uh, esoteric technology. Like, this is, this is better money that will help to create better incentives in a world where monetary incentives and therefore many other incentives have been misaligned for a long time. Mm -hmm. So I want people to adopt Bitcoin. I mean, everything that I'm doing professionally right now, and even you know this podcast, I guess maybe it's considered professionally, but mm -hmm. this isn't my full-time gig. Like uh, This is all focused on Bitcoin adoption, but I feel like there's still going to be that connection in people's minds to FTX, you know, Matt Damon, uh, wh whatever it was, crypto.com, or I don't, even, I don't even know what, I can't remember what they were because they're all the same to me. But... I'm afraid that people will see that commercial and they'll just lump it back into crypto. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how I feel about that, but I do hope that some of these ads, uh, other things, at least begin to make people ask more questions, ho hopefully better questions to your point uh, about what Bitcoin is. And hopefully eventually they'll get there, even if they initially write Bitcoin off during the Super Bowl as crypto. I don't know. What are your thoughts there? Am I needlessly worried or complaining or do you feel similarly? I feel I feel similarly. I, I just feel like there's a story that needs to be told with Bitcoin mm. and it's not being told. Uh, mm -hmm. Super Bowl may not be the right venue. Traditional commercials may not be the right venue. But uh, but yeah, I just think that there there's definitely I call it a reintroduction to the working class. I feel like mm. there needs to be a reintroduction of Bitcoin and what it really is. And the problem that it's solving and why it exists, because because yeah. that that's really where I was convicted. Because it was like a couple years into my Bitcoin journey, I could keep on going down the rabbit hole and going deeper and deeper, but I almost felt a sense of uh, selfishness, where I'm like, you know, 99% of people don't even know that there is a rabbit hole and why it exists mm. and why Bitcoin is even a thing. So it's like maybe instead come up out of the rabbit hole and just simplify bitcoin as much as possible and tell the story i don't think that we need to copy crypto i think just got to do a better job of differentiating bitcoin from crypto and telling the story what is that working class story that you think needs to be told it could be you know of working class people who experience the benefits of bitcoin mm -hmm. or it could just be a way of communicating why bitcoin works for the working class but what is that like? Let, let's say that you had thirty seconds to a minute to whether it's an elevator pitch and conversation or it's a Super Bowl ad. What is it that you wish people could see if you were to kind of write that story? Mm. One idea that comes to mind is my my dad. So my dad he he was a state uh, worker in the nineteen seventies, and he broke down how much he got paid after taxes, and I think it was like. $23 per day. And that was eight hours, like out on the highway, risking his life, you know, um, and, you know, cold temperatures, hot temperatures, but that $23, if he would have stuffed that under his mattress, like it wouldn't buy him a pizza today, a large pizza. So finding the way to tell that story that money is, is stealing, stealing work over time. Um, I think, I don't know if it's just one story. I think it's going to be multiple because, I mean, like I said, Bitcoin is better. It means something different to everyone. Um, yep. But initially, that would be the story that I would come out with. Like, work that your your parents did in the 70s 
is valued at a pizza today, you know? Hmm. So I, I think that's wrong. Wow. That's powerful. <laughs> and I think being able, being able to connect Bitcoin back to the fact that real work is put into Bitcoin being created is super powerful, especially for people who do hard work for a living. Mm -hmm. And I would say even more so when it's juxtaposed to the US dollar, that's kind of a, a print on demand situation for people who are at the top. Uh, so I, I like that. I think, you know, I, I can almost imagine that right now as you're talking about it. I appreciate you sharing. And I know that Bitcoin is better is in its infancy. Uh, but I'm excited to see how it grows in the future. And you did kind of paint some different paths forward. Could be the bootstrap approach or it could be a, a little grander depending on uh, you know how quickly it catches on and maybe who catches the vision. But uh, I'd love to hear some final thoughts that you have, where people can go and maybe how they can get involved as they're hearing this if they want to take the next step or at least make sure that Bitcoin is better is at the, the front of their minds for the future. Yeah, yeah. Um, and from a business perspective, um, we've kind of talked about this offline as well, Joshua. Um, the, the demand to work in the Bitcoin industry is just through the roof. Like we were talking, there was a, a River job posting a few weeks ago. It got like, I don't know, 300 likes, just a flood of applicants. Mm -hmm. So there's all of these people that the Bitcoin companies are turning away who want to contribute to growing adoption. Um, so I, I see this nonprofit as a way for Bitcoiners to volunteer, build up a portfolio, be effective, get plugged in to the Bitcoin space and grow adoption. Um, so that's one, that's one benefit. And if I would just say to your listeners, if, if they want to get involved, whether that is serving on the board, serving as a volunteer, uh, if you'll go to bitcoinisbetter.org, I've got a contact form. Um, fill that out, and I'd love to set up, you know, one on one and learn more about you and and your Bitcoin journey and uh, why you're interested in growing adoption. And how about social media? Do you have you know places that you particularly like people to follow, either you or Bitcoin is Better, the organization on? Yes, yes. Yeah, so I'm uh, primarily on X. So at DC Hirsch. And then also on LinkedIn as well. I haven't I haven't moved over to calling Twitter X yet, but I think I'm almost there. <laughs> like I, I saw it the other day. I think it's because I'm so used to seeing the logo now to where it is, it's more X to me now than it is Twitter. So I'm not quite as far along as you are. But that was uh, still difficult to say. It felt unnatural. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you pulled it off. You fooled me. I appreciate you sharing today, Daniel. Looking forward to hearing more about Bitcoin is better as you continue to grow. Thank you so much for your time today. It's been a pleasure. All right. Thank you, Josh. Well, friends, it's a wrap. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Business Bitcoinization Show. If you want to reach out to either me or Daniel, you can find those links down in the show notes. And be sure to check out bitcoinisbetter.org. As always, keep building, keep growing, and until next time, keep living and leading well. If you're a regular listener of the podcast, thank you. If you want to take a further step in your support for the show, you can help us grow by listening on Fountain, a value for value podcast app on iOS or Android. If you hear something you like that you disagree with or anything else, you can share it by sending some sats and adding a comment with your thoughts. Some of you have already done this and I appreciate it. I'm going to begin reading your boosts on upcoming episodes. So if you have some insight or value to add, let the people know. Getting started with Fountain is easy. You can add Bitcoin to your Fountain wallet by using your fiat accounts or any lightning wallet and one of my favorite features is that once you're using the app you can earn sats just by listening on fountain check out the link in the show notes to get started with fountain today